Um, I'd like to introduce you all to uh, Tammy Buto. She's going to be talking to you about Dropbox database structure. Can everyone please give her a warm welcome? Hi everybody. My name is Tammy Buto and I'm an SRE manager at Dropbox. I've been at Dropbox for about four months now um, and I really, really love it and I'm excited to come here today to share what I've learned over the last four months. And prior to Dropbox, I was working at DigitalOcean in New York on cloud infrastructure. And before that, six years at the National Australia Bank, um, working across mobile apps, security, uh, web apps, infrastructure as well. And yeah, I've really loved it since graduating university. So today I'm going to talk about Dropbox database infrastructure. And one of the reasons I was so excited to join Dropbox was because for a really long time, I've always loved databases. And when I was at university, I just, for fun, took every single database elective that you could take. And I remember thinking at the time, wow, like, I don't know when I'm going to be doing like performance tuning of hardware for databases in my entire career. But now it's something that I get to do all the time. And it's like, wow, it actually worked out. Um, and it's, it's pretty funny, because I think I did like six or seven electives about databases. And it's quite cool, too, because I went to QUT in Australia, and I studied computer science there. And we did MySQL from 2005. So I've been using it for now 10 years. And it's really exciting to get to work on it full time. So very happy to be here. And right now, I live in San Francisco and work at the Dropbox office. So I think a lot of people know what Dropbox is. Um, but just to share, Dropbox allows you to access your files from anywhere on the web, mobile, desktop. And I think it's really convenient. There's a lot of really cool customers that I've talked to and met. And it's fun when I meet my friends and they're like, wow, I use Dropbox all the time. That's so cool. So that's a lot of fun. Something that a lot of people don't know, I notice, is that, yeah, there's a desktop client for Linux with Dropbox. So you can definitely get that on your computer as well. We've got Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, and you can compile from source. Yeah. And it's fun. Like a lot of people say, oh, like I use like it on my webs. I use it, I use the website, but do you have a desktop version? Totally. So you can just go to that URL. And if you go there on your Linux machine, it'll actually automatically redirect. It should just do that by itself. But that's pretty cool. And one of the things that I love about Dropbox is it's super fast to sync files. And I think that's one of the most amazing things that we do. And Obviously, that's like a lot of work over many, many years to create that file syncing um, system that works so fast. And every team across the company works together to make that happen, which is really cool. And we also store petabytes of data in MySQL, which is pretty cool. And there's thousands and thousands of servers. And like I mentioned earlier this week, we have 400 million customers, which is pretty cool. Um, because, yeah, I always dreamt that when I was younger, I would get to work somewhere where we had millions of customers. And I remember when I first started working um, at the National Australia Bank, I was excited because we were helping you know, millions of customers around Australia get home loans. And that's where I worked in the first team, where we were supporting them. And that was quite fun. Um, and now it's like, wow, 400 million customers. Coming from Australia, where our population is 24 million, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Something that I love, too, is just the stories of how our customers are using Dropbox. So something I think is really cool is like 65% of Sundance filmmakers use Dropbox to share files with each other, to share scripts. And that's really exciting, because I know that every day while I'm at work and we're making sure that our systems are reliable, that it's really fast, that everything is secure, that it's always up and running, um, I know that there's like amazing people doing amazing things all over the world. And that's really inspiring to me. I just wanted to show you where we work as well, because I think that's actually very important for how do you have a great team environment? And how do you make sure that you're always innovating and building really cool things? Uh, so we actually spend most of our, room, our time in this room, the one that says the future is now. That's right next to where we sit. And you can see that there's heaps of Lego on the desk. And that's always there. Um, and it's just like this really fun environment. You walk into the office and it's like colorful, it's fun. We have these awesome round tables and it feels like, um, like I always feel like we're building a rocket ship 
and you know it's already flying and we're building it and that's what it feels like when you're in the office you're excited together to be building to think creatively to brainstorm and this is where we work and there's also a picture there of the cafe so we also have breakfast lunch and dinner which is really cool too and I think the main thing that I think is why it's so great is because you feel like you're always like refueled um, breakfast lunch and dinner it's super healthy and I feel like I have just have great ideas because of that as well and we're moving into a really new office soon which is that new building there with a really cool rooftop so that's exciting um, later this year we'll move there because we've grown so much and we're in we're headquartered in San Francisco and this is one of my team members who's based in Malta so he gets to work by the beach <laughs> which I think is really cool too. I love that we have remote team all over Dublin, Malta, Vegas, San Francisco to support Dropbox's databases. So back in 2012, this was the Dropbox databases team. One person, which I'm always like, wow, like Dropbox had already then millions and millions of customers and Renjish, he was the one person who looked after Dropbox's databases and he's still at Dropbox which is amazing, um, and he's the tech lead on my team, and he's so awesome to work with. I love working with Ranjish. He has amazing ideas, and one of the best things too is I think he's very brave. He's always trying to think, how can we do better every single day, and what can we do to improve performance, reliability, availability? So it's very inspiring get, getting to work with him, and he knows the history over the last few years of what happened at Dropbox. So this is our team now, myself, Ranjish, Dave, Alex, Brian, Renee, Slava, Max, and Peter. And many of my team members have over 10 years of experience with MySQL, which is really awesome. So I definitely work with people who are very talented. Another thing that I think is very important for our team is that everyone has a speciality. So for example, Alex is an expert in backups. Renee is an expert in performance. And I think over the last four months, I've really seen how if you have people on your team that really deep dive into something specific, it's amazing. And it's the first time where I'm like, wow, I get to work with people who, are, who specialize in something that's very important for all of us. Alex also works on monitoring. And that's amazing too, to have somebody who can create monitoring tools for us constantly and always be evolving what we have. That our team is awesome. And like I said, we definitely care about performance. For like our fun event, we recently went go-karting and it was really fun because I, I came last, but that's okay. <laughs> but um, one of the fun things that everyone did was they were sending each other tips of like, you know, how do you make the turn, take the turn the best to make sure that you're taking the right path that you could actually win. And I think our team's always thinking like that, like how can we optimize everything that we do? And I think that's just a really cool um, way to think all the time no matter what you're doing, if it's go-karting or if you're at work. So here's a diagram of our Dropbox infrastructure. So at the bottom level, we have MySQL, our databases, and there's around 6,000 databases right now. Above that, we have our database proxy, which was written internally in Python. And then above that, we have a database as a service, which we also wrote internally, which is like a NoSQL uh, database, distributed database layer. And above that, we have Memcache, and then our web servers, which are Nginx. So I think this is cool to be able to see the structure there of over time, obviously it wasn't like this when Dropbox started and didn't have as many customers, but now with 400 million customers and thousands and thousands of databases, this is the infrastructure that works for us. So I'll go into more detail on that as well. There's a really great talk that you can watch, which I recommend, which is on, it's on YouTube. And Zviad is one of our engineers who originally built our uh, NoSQL distributed database layer, which we call Edge Store. And there's a talk called Go at Dropbox, where he explains how we decided to write it in Go because it was very good for performance. And over the last few years, about three years now, we've been continuously evolving that and making it better. And it's been quite good. So instead of engineers at Dropbox directly writing to MySQL, they actually write to Edge Store. And we have an API that they can use. And then it's funneled through Edge, stores and the Edge Store and then goes to MySQL. So they don't actually write uh, SQL day to day. They're actually, impact, like, they're actually talking directly to Edge Store, which is very different. 
And I think that's quite good because for us, um, the more people that we move to Edge Store, the better. Because we don't have to think about things like, oh, like here's a statement which is really causing us some issues. Like, and it's writing directly to the database. We know that that can cause many problems. So this has been a great thing for us to do. And the reason that we wrote it ourselves uh, was that it was a long time ago. And at the time when they started to write it, there wasn't anything out there that would really work for us because it was quite a few years ago. But now there are like several distributed database layers that you could use. Something else that we really like uh, is Vitesse. So we wrote our own SQL proxy, but we do really love Vitesse from YouTube, and it's great. So this is really awesome as well for scale and performance, and it's available on GitHub. It's open source. And we have many of the team members in my team that came from YouTube. So Ranjish was at YouTube before, and he worked on Vitesse. We also have Mike Solomon, who worked on Vitesse, and he works at Dropbox now as well. And we definitely think that Vitesse is awesome, and we all love it. And it's also written in Go, which is very good for performance. Uh, so it's something that we're looking at now to think we have our current proxy. What will we do in the future? This is something that we do love. We like Vitesse a lot. And like I mentioned before, we also use Memcache, which was originally written for LiveJournal. Um, and yeah, that's also available open source. You can, ask, you can use that too. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are using it right now. And it works pretty well for us. That's great too. And now for some more detail on our uh, MySQL infrastructure. So we use Pocona 5.6 at the moment. One of the things I just love about Dropbox as well was when I started, uh, they told me how we constantly upgrade for new features. That's something that we definitely do. I know sometimes uh, I've worked places where we say, oh, like, OK, we could upgrade, but that's a really big task. To upgrade, it, you know, it takes around a year sometimes to upgrade all of your servers and make sure that everything works OK. But over the last few years, we've upgraded MySQL four times, which is amazing. Uh, and we're currently thinking about, OK, how do we upgrade next for 5.7, 5.7, and when it's ready? So right now, we have um, also our own tool, which we built, called DB Manager, which is a service that helps us manage MySQL. And we have our infrastructure like this, the primary, and then we have two replicas. That's what our cluster looks like, which helps for redundancy. And we use extra backup from Pocona for backups. And then we store our backups locally, HDFS, and then also on S3. Um, and when I joined Dropbox, I was like, wow, this is awesome. OK, cool, we have two replicas, um, which is great, because if you only had one primary and one replica, that's not as good as having two. Obviously, it costs more money, and it's harder because you have to have many machines. But it's been really good for us. I think that's one of the reasons why we have great reliability. So now I'd like to talk about some of the tools that we've built to help us with our infrastructure. This is a diagram that I drew, but it represents like the scale <laughs> over time from 2008 to 2014. So it's pretty exciting to think, OK, when we first started, obviously we had very, very small infrastructure. Our team was tiny, not many people at all. But from 2008 to 2014, it's like hundreds of millions of customers. And now in 2016, 400 million customers. But that's a really, really big spike that you can see there. And to be able to keep up with that growth, we had to build a lot of tools. And because of that growth, our database tasks grew, and they took a lot of time. There were so many things that our team had to do, database promotions, cloning, schema changes, and upgrades. And you can understand that's why we then decided to create these other layers, like Edge Store. Because if you have hundreds of engineers, which we do, we now have hundreds of engineers. I think there's over 500 engineers at Dropbox. When you have hundreds of engineers who want to be constantly building new features and shipping code, if you're constantly doing schema changes and it's taking quite a long time, that can really slow you down. So we're always trying to think, how can we make it faster for every engineer at Dropbox? We also wanted to make sure that everything was reliable. And as our team grew, instead of having just one person working on databases, 
we now have nine people, so it's been really important for us to have visibility so that we can all understand what's happening all the time. So this is the tool that we built called DB Manager. And at the moment, it's a Python web application using Tornado, uh, but we're currently rewriting it as well to make it even better and improve it. And I think that's a great thing too about Dropbox. We do focus a lot on every team builds their own internal tools and then we share with other teams what we've built. So that's been really important too. So our team is able to think like what tools work for us? Like what should we build for us specifically that will help us day to day? And as you can see here, we've got cloning, promoting, you can see free hosts because what happens is our hardware team will allocate us hosts and then we can use those how we need. And we often talk to them all the time about, OK, this is how much we're scaling, so we'll need to get this many machines in the future. And I think that's a great thing, too, to always be constantly thinking about growth and looking at the metrics, working with other teams to understand what you need to do. You can also see jobs, backups, backup lag stats, missing backups, S3 backups, and topology. So here's an example of the cloning screen which you can see here, you can see how do you go from your source to your destination when you want to clone. And you can see a few other things there, like our hardware classes. Um, this is something that I'll talk more about, but that's something great that I really love when I joined Dropbox too. We actually name our hardware classes, which is really nice because you know that if it's a specific hardware class, it has a certain set of configuration parameters. So the same RAM, the same storage, um, which is really cool, the same machine type. You can see the kernel version, MySQL version, um, but this is really great to be able to have all of this information and it's very visible. So this is our promotion screen here. And when I joined Dropbox, I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like We built these tools ourselves because we thought that it would be useful. I think that's really awesome. I hadn't seen anything like this before. Um, but, you know, we can do promotions, we, can, we do auto promotions, we also can do emergency promotions if we need to. And this lets us think then uh, to take a step back and say, okay, right now we automate promotions, uh, but if a promotion fails, why does it fail? And then we can reduce the number of failed promotions, which is what we do right now. So it means that you don't have to be thinking about that one problem that you had at the start that you had to manually do promotions, now you're thinking like, when those, man when those automated promotions fail, what actually can I do to reduce them? Which is cool. So there's always things that you can do to improve what you're doing. Uh, but I think it's like taking that first step to think, what can I automate? And then you'll see, oh, wow, you can actually reduce error rates and you can make sure that your platform's better. With backups, it's really awesome that we have Alex on our team. Um, he's been working with backups for databases for a very long time. And one of the things that he always says is with backups, you will make a mistake. Like that's something that he always mentions. And that's okay, you will make a mistake. Um, you'll probably need to increase the amount of backups that you take. And also you need to be able to store them somewhere, which is very important too. And it's very good to have automated recovery and run them quarterly to make sure that it's always working. We run them even more than that as well, which is quite good. But I love that idea of, yes, we want to do backups. We want to make sure that they're working. We want them to be automated. Um, and we also try and make sure that we always are improving performance of backups too, since they're so important. And then I think a good question is like, why UI? Because um, I know a lot of the time you might have more command line tools. And we do have command line tools. And you can run all of the DB manager scripts through the command line. Uh, but having a UI is really good for us, especially when you have um, central logging and to be able to see what jobs are running and it's very visible, it's easy. And it's the biggest thing I think is that it's not just for our team, it's also for other teams. So if somebody's on call from a different team and they need to understand, did something that happened with the database team just impact us? They can actually just go and look at DB Manager. They don't need to go somewhere and wonder where do I need to look to see that. They can just look at DB Manager and see the logs and understand what recently happened. So that's been very cool. So it's not just good for our team, but it's good for other teams too. And it means that if we have someone else that is on call and they're not from our team, they can easily know that if they need to do an emergency promotion, they can go to DB Manager and they can do it. It's very easy to do. Uh, so post DB Manager, things were a lot more simple. 
We knew where everything was. When, you were, when you're onboarded now, you know that you go to DB Manager, you can understand what kind of actions you can take. Uh, we don't have to say, oh, these are the different types of things. You can just see it straight away when you go there. You know that you can do promotions, backups, cloning from DB Manager. It's very good. And it made it a lot easier because you could just paste in a host name, uh, which saves us a lot of time. And I think that's a big thing too at Dropbox. We're always trying to think of how do you make things that they're so easy to understand what's going on. So that's why we have hardware classes. Um, when you look at our host names, they're really easy to understand. And I know coming from other places, sometimes it's tough with host names because they're like really long and you have no idea what it's about. Um, and if there aren't hardware classes, it's tough to know what this machine even does. We have another tool, um, which is really handy, where you can paste in a host name. And it autom it's a script, so it doesn't have a UI yet. But you paste in the host name, and it shoots back all the information about that host, which is really handy, too. So you can understand everything about it. And that saves a lot of time. Something else that I love and I've always loved is benchmarking. Uh, and that's a big thing that our team loves. So we're always trying to think, how do we get the most out of our hardware, especially because database hardware is so expensive. Uh, so we all know that you, like, your database hardware is often the most expensive that you'll have at your company because it needs to be a very high performance. Uh, but I think it's definitely good to benchmark. We do a lot of benchmark testing before we put hardware into production. So we'll actually look at the hardware and we'll think, does this work for us? And we run a certain set of tests against the hardware and then we compare it to what we already have in production, which I think has been quite cool. And I know I've seen this done at a lot of places where you'll set up a few machines at the data center to be able to test it and run it, which is great. But I think sometimes it might be another team that does the benchmarking and testing. But I think it's really great if your team, if you are the databases team, is able to actually do that benchmarking. So whichever team you're in, you can say, well, this is what we want to see for us. And these are the types of things that we want to run on this machine. So let's test those specific scenarios. And you can really dive quite deep into the details of what you want the machine to do. And also, I think the biggest thing with benchmarking, too, is it's fun. Um, I think it's quite fun to see like, what hardware can do. And as hardware changes over time, it gets faster, and it's better, and it's also more affordable. That's quite fun. So database job scheduling and prioritization. I mentioned this a little bit before, um, but this is one of the coolest things too that we have. And we're definitely working on improving this right now. But what we have is when we run, when somebody goes into DB Manager, and obviously because it's a UI, so many people can use it at the same time. But what happens if somebody runs one action on one host, and then they run another action on the same host? And then you have two actions running on that same host through DB Manager. So we didn't want something bad to happen. Uh, so what we did was we made sure that there was prioritization. So a promotion will always take priority over something else, which I think was really important to build into DB Manager. But we're constantly looking at that too. Right now, um, we have lots of ideas for where we'll take it in the future about being able to run multiple scenarios step by step and having a sequence of events that we want to kick off from DB Manager. Because right now, you can see that it might just be like, one sequence, like we want to run a backup or we want to do a clone. But what if you want to do, say, a MySQL upgrade? Like how many steps are involved and what do you need to do to automate that entire process? Because really, overall, what we want to do is eliminate manual operations so that we can focus more on automation and reducing failure. But I think, to me, that's really exciting. And every time we think, wow, like, look what we can do with DB Manager. And it's exciting when we onboard new team members and you can show them what we've created. And to be able to think constantly, like, what can we do to make it better is really cool. I mentioned a little bit before about logging. And sometimes it can be difficult with logging when you don't know where the logs are, what's going on, or you can't see them. And before DB Manager, we didn't have common logging. Uh, so we had logs, logging happening on various machines in different locations. Um, and then instead, when we had DB Manager, it was like, wow, cool. Now we have centralized logging. So we have a centralized server, easy access for everybody. And we also have this nice GUI so you can actually see the logs and understand what's just happened. It's nice because I can see, oh, that job just failed. Why did it fail? Because you can imagine, too, when we're in this state of constant automation, 
We're always fixing our scripts and making them better to try and improve performance, but sometimes something can go wrong. So we might change the automated or the promotion script and maybe our change had an impact. So we need to be able to see, okay, what impact did it have? Did it fail? Why? Is it still running as fast as it was before with our new changes? So we always need to benchmark and measure our scripts. And the best thing with common logging and having it centralized is that everyone can see it together. I mentioned this a little bit before on Tuesday, uh, but Hermes is available on GitHub and we've shared that on the Dropbox GitHub account. It's really cool um, because it's for all of the SRE teams to be able to see what quests do I need to do? So I mentioned a little bit before, but things like rack switch upgrades, reboots of machines, will be given a quest and it's a nice UI as well. So we can see here all, there could be like hundreds of machines that we need to perform an action on. Um, and then we'll go, okay, we'll go through and do those and then they get marked as complete when they're done. So that's quite nice because every team can see what quests they need to achieve. And I definitely recommend checking this out because in the past I'd seen things like, um, you know, spreadsheets or things like that to track different actions. But this is way better to have Hermes and it was built internally by our team. Monitoring is something that I've loved for a really long time. Um, and I'm happy because we use Grafana at Dropbox and I really love Grafana and it's also open source. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people use Grafana too and I've been using it for a few years now and yeah, I really think it's quite handy and you can definitely check that out. Um, here's just a screenshot of what it looks like just from the website. Um, and we definitely use a lot of monitoring and alerting to be able to check there. So performance. Probably my most favorite topic since I joined Dropbox uh, because I never thought so much before about how you can constantly improve performance at every single layer of the stack. That's something that I just think about every single day now, which is exciting. And I think I've learned myself that, yeah, wow, like if we do improve performance, it impacts everything. Like it impacts the data center team, it impacts um, the hardware team, it impacts networking. Uh, it impacts the end customer and just within our team, anything that we do, no matter how small, it can then impact everybody. But one of the big things we've been focusing on was improving our backup restore speed um, and also the ability to quickly take a backup and send it to S3. So going to S3 and coming back. Uh, and that's been really exciting because you can imagine if you have some sort of problem and you need to quickly restore a backup, then the faster it is, the better. So that's been a fun project for us to work on. So we use LSOP for that. And <laughs> obviously it's pretty good because NASA use it um, <laughs> for like robots to Mars. Uh, so that's quite cool. And we also use extra backup from Picona. And we have it set so we can do, um, we can do parallelism as well. And we also do encryption with OpenSSL so a lot of open source tools that we're using, which is quite cool. But I do love so much that we have the time to think, um, what are we going to do to make things better to improve performance? And that's exciting. And I love that our team gets excited about that every day. What are the types of things that we could do? And we have the ability to be able to do a lot of testing. And one of the reasons for that is because we have a very good stage cluster of databases. And I think that that's something that is also very good. So we have some fake shards with traffic that we can send to them. And that means that you can really do a lot of good testing to make sure that it would work in production. Something else that we're working on, which is very new, um, is order remediation. We've been working on it for a few months. And there is a GitHub account up. It's called Naru. We haven't yet shared it, but I definitely recommend keeping an eye on this. Um, watch it and wait to see when it comes out because this is something that I love. And we use it internally. It's very cool. Dave Ma, he's done a lot of work uh, to build that out. And it's super cool to be able to do automated remediation. Many of the teams across Dropbox are using the NARU framework. And I can't wait till we share this widely. And it's been a lot of good work over the last few months. I mentioned a little bit before about inventory management. So something that I love, which I hadn't seen before, Surprisingly, it's interesting when you've been working. I've been working for like, you know, if, uh, with MySQL 
now for over 10 years and with Linux for 10 years, but I had never seen a machine database, which I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I don't know why I never saw that before. Um, but the idea is that we have a database that stores all of the machines. So instead of um, just going, okay, here's our machines, I'll write a script or like just use some sort of tool to pull up the machines, we actually have it all stored in a database, which is nice because you have all of the details about the machines in this database and we have MDB tags, which is what we call them. So when you look at a machine, you can see what tags does it have. So what is the kernel that it has? Um, all of the different settings that that machine has. So that's a really cool idea, just having this database that stores all information about your machine. Machines. Um, and something funny, which I thought when I started at Dropbox, funny story, was that um, our machines are given specific names. So they have different hardware classes. And the, drop, the database machines, because they're like very good machines, um, they're, they're all given names of wrestlers, which is really funny. But the database machines are called Mavens, uh, because they're like the famous WWE wrestler, Maven Huffman, <laughs> which I thought was so funny. I was like, oh, wow. But they're our best machines. Um, and yeah, it's easily to distinguish. And it's also very easy to remember. And it's fun at work, too, to say, oh, how many Mavens are we getting next month? Uh, I think that's quite cool. <laughs> Another thing that's been very important for us over the years is diagnostic tools. So we have quite a few different tools that we've created and we're constantly making new tools. One of them is automated periodic TCP dumps. We also have tools to automatically kill long-running transactions. And we have another tool which is performance schema tools um, to show us open transactions to review. And at the moment, that's a command line tool, which is really handy because you can easily see what, what query is running and where is it coming from. And then we can talk to that team and we can understand what it is, which is very helpful when you have hundreds of engineers and thousands of machines. Something else that we love as well is ATOP. And I'm sure a lot of people have used this. Um, but yeah, it's so, so handy. So for us, this has been really good because it's helped us a lot with debugging. Uh, so definitely recommend that. And Dave Turner from my team, he loves ATOP. He'll tell everyone about it, that they should use it. And over the years, that's been really good for us. So the future. Where are we going in the future? Some of the main things we care about are reliability, performance, and cost improvements. But we're also excited about different types of things that we can build and tools that we can use. One of the things I personally love is config management. Um, and I wrote an article about how to create your first chef cookbooks to manage cloud infrastructure if you haven't tried that before. And it's super easy to get started. So this article is on Medium. But it just talks about how you can make your chef workstation and your chef server. And you end up with your node as well. And this is my terminal screens. They're very colorful. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so simple to then be able to create whatever you would like to build. So this is an example of a cookbook which just runs Nginx and has a simple HTML page. But then you can then easily create a new node which runs that and have many, many nodes running this little web page. So I just love Chef when I first used it. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like, no more handcrafting servers. Um, I just love the idea of being able to use Chef and creating nodes of whatever you've got that you want to build. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out. If you haven't used Chef before and you're interested in giving it a go, I found that it was a lot of fun. And it's also quite easy to do if you're just using cloud infrastructure uh, and spinning up servers and taking them down. It, it's really quite quick. Some of the books and papers we love. I uh, also wanted to recommend that. Really love this book by Brian Kernigan. Um, and there's a really great example of concurrent web crawler in Go, which we like. And also papers we love. Um, there are some really great papers by Peter Alvaro. Uh, and he's written a lot about fault injection and created Molly, which um, you can understand like Netflix with um, chaos monkeys and all of those. So those are some of the things that we love. So I wanted to share those as well. So thank you so much for coming along today. And I'd like to see if you have any questions. Thank you. Um, hi. hi. Uh, 
You mentioned uh, extra dB and Pocona and so on. Are yep. you actually using Maria dB? No, we're using Pocona at the moment, but we're definitely always looking at um, what is out there. And we talk to the Maria dB team all the time. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, and are you using any clustering technologies or are you sharding your databases? We shard. Okay. We shard our databases. Yeah. We have thousands of shards. Okay. Yep. Thank and you. we've done that for a long time. Yeah. Hi, so lots of technical notes, but I was really struck by, um, you said something very early on the talk about you worked at National Australia Bank and yes. now you're working at Dropbox. Yeah. And it just seems like you've gone from a, uh, how do I put this, a culture that's been sort of, we will be risk averse to something like everything you were talking about was, yeah. we are going to push the boundaries. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about like, what was the culture like? What was it, what was the culture shift like going yeah. from that environment to something like Dropbox? Yeah. I've. I think that's actually one of the most interesting things that I've noticed, like definitely like you mentioned, because um, I remember when I was at the National Australia Bank, we actually focused a lot on decommissioning old systems, legacy systems, and you're trying to get rid of risk. Um, you're trying to like reduce risk, you're trying to get rid of problems, you're trying to close down systems that aren't working very well. Uh, but then at Dropbox, it's a totally different mentality. And I definitely think when I first joined Dropbox, like one of the biggest things I noticed um, which I hadn't seen anywhere before was just that everyone is so brave. Like that's definitely how I would describe it because I came from an environment that wasn't so much like that. Uh, but I definitely think it's everybody's like that at Dropbox. They always are thinking, how do I push the boundaries? Like how do we get the most out of this? And um, I would love if Ranjish was able to be here because when you meet him, he's very inspiring and he always encourages everybody to be brave and to think how can we make things better. And I do very much think that it's great for a team structure. I'm the manager of our databases team, and he's the tech lead of our team. And we work together really closely. And that's a great thing about Dropbox, too, because uh, Renjish is a staff engineer, and he's been at Dropbox for a very long time. And we have levels for engineers and also levels for managers that actually match up. So as an engineer, you can grow up to the staff engineer level, which is really cool. So I think you're just encouraged to always be thinking, how do you grow and how do you do things better? Yeah. You mentioned the machine database. Yeah. How do you go about keeping that up to date? Is it a manual process or do you have some automation that helps out? Or Yeah, yeah. so we definitely have like a lot of automation with the machine database too. I'd love to be able to share more about it. So that's something I was thinking when I was creating this talk, if we could share how we built that and how it works because I hadn't actually seen it before anywhere else. And I think it's, to me, when I first started, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And when it was actually the first tool that I was taught how to use when I started at Dropbox, they said, OK, the very first thing you need to see is MDB. Because I was thinking, how many machines do we have? What are they like? Where are they? Like, that's what you're trying to understand. And to be able to have MDB and just be able to use it, like, it has so many features, and we're constantly adding new features to it. Uh, but we do have a very good process where we have our hardware team who allocates the machines to us. We have a tag in MDB, which you can set the owner of a machine. So we automatically set the owner of all of those new machines to the databases team. Uh, so there's a lot of automation around that. It's really quite cool. But that's definitely something I'd like to take away to think, how can we share more about how we actually use MDB? Because it's quite cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I probably can't so much yet. But I'll definitely, I'd like to share more. So yeah. Ooh, don't fall over. <laughs> With the information that you've got about yeah. failures and all of that sort of stuff, do you do predictive analysis? Like, you know, the Rowdy Roddy Piper's always cark it after two and a half years or those oh, motherboards yeah. fail? Yeah, so, yeah, we do some really cool stuff there. Um, our hardware team is amazing. They have so many different dashboards that they've created. There are capacity dashboards. Um, we have a lot of dashboards that will estimate, okay, these are our machines, like when will we need to replace these machines because of like, you know, they'll get old over time. We definitely think like, what is the life cycle for that machine? And we're always talking about it and understanding it. Another big thing, which I know some, sometimes people do it, sometimes people don't, like we, we don't like hug the servers, you know? <laughs> we, we just go, this is the server right now, it's in production, but it's okay if it leaves because it's bad, like 
it's fine, leave it. it. It's more that we hug the hardware class. We're like, all the mavens are great, um, and then we'll just replace it if, that serv if something goes wrong with that server. So that's the mentality too, um, which I think is quite different from a lot of places. Yeah. <laughs> this is tough, this room. <laughs> Have you found that pushing the boundaries or, or the culture of pushing the boundaries has ever got Dropbox or yourself into a, a pickle? And if so, how have you gone about resolving that? Yeah. Um, and if not, why do you think it doesn't? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Um, yeah, over the years, Ranjush, he always has stories of things where, you know, the site's gone down maybe because we pushed the boundaries too hard. Um, but, like, we're very, very good at recovery. So I think, like, the best... The biggest thing is to always focus on like, can you get, can you improve your restore speed? Um, because you know, you will always have outages, but to make sure that you're always improving your restore speed, that's the biggest thing that I've always focused on. Um, and it was the same when I was at the National Australia Bank, like you will have outages, but you need to be able to get back up and running really fast. And I think like something that I noticed is very similar across everywhere that I've worked is that rollbacks are okay. Like it's totally okay to roll back. And I think that you should be in a place where you can roll back. And I know that, um, Earlier this week with Pinterest, they talked about how they roll back all the time. Like that's the same with us. I think that's very important. You should always be able to roll back a change to make sure that you can get back to that good state um, rather than, you know, trying to fix an issue in production, which is really tough and you're not sure why it's happening. If you can just roll back, that's much better. Yeah. But I think overall, like that mentality, it's been much better um, to have it. I definitely think it's great. So I, I know that we'll continue to always push the boundaries to try and make things better. And we'll always still at the same time push the boundaries of like, can we improve restore time? Can we be better at rolling back? Can we reduce faults um, and reduce issues? Which is why we're looking at tools like um, Netflix Chaos Monkey, which is quite cool. And all those different things that you can build to understand like, what are your unknown unknowns? <laughs> On behalf of the Linux community, I would like to say thank oh. you very much for your contribution today. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.